Final Cut Pro is officially a subscription and the internet is losing its mind, calling it the Adobeification of Apple. But after 15 years of free updates, I'm about to say something that's gonna get me canceled in the Final Cut community. This is the best thing that happened to Final Cut Pro since the move to X. And if we want the software to actually survive the next decade, we need to start paying for it. Here's why Creator Studio is actually a win for legacy users and why I am happily opening my wallet. Apple just dropped Creator Studio at $12.99 a month subscription for a bundle that includes Final Cut Pro, Logic, Pixelmator Pro, Motion and Compressor and a few other apps. And let's clear up the biggest misconception right now. If you bought Final Cut Pro 10 years ago, you are not being locked out. Apple stated in its press release that one-time purchasers still get the big intelligence updates, beat detection, transcript search, and visual search. So why all the drama? Because for the first time, there's a premium tier to Final Cut Pro. And while some see a paywall, I see a lifeline for the Pro Apps team that has been working for free for over a decade. Let's talk about this S word, subscriptions. And I get it, subscription fatigue is real. I personally use Maxim One, and that's over $1,000 a year. Also Adobe Creative Cloud, which is another 800. Then there's plugins, assets, storage, it all adds up. But looking at the math here, Adobe is five to six times more expensive than Apple's new Creator Studio. And the dirty little secret is that Adobe and Maxon have to be expensive. They don't sell you a two to $4,000 computer every few years. Their software is their only revenue. Apple and Blackmagic are very different. They sell hardware first and then add on software. But here's the problem with buy it once and free forever model. Developer incentives. If a software team isn't bringing in recurring revenue, they eventually become a hobby for the parent company. We've seen Apple kill hobbies before. By moving into a hybrid model, Apple is finally giving the Pro Apps team a reason to innovate at the speed of the industry. And there's many people screaming online, just switch to DaVinci Resolve. It's a one-time payment and it's a powerhouse. And you know what? They're right. Resolve is incredible. But for my business and for what I do, it's an annoying piece of software. I can do things in Final Cut Pro combined with After Effects and Cinema 4D 100 times faster than I can do it in Resolve. And in this industry, time is hugely greater than money. If I can save two hours on a delivery because Final Cut Pro's magnetic timeline is faster, that software just paid for itself entirely in just one afternoon. But there's a catch. If Apple is charging us now, what happens to the features we've been begging for for years? Does that mean that the Pro in Final Cut Pro is finally coming back? Let's be real, Final Cut Pro hasn't been up to standards for a while now. We've been begging for role-based mixing, better keyframe, better native 3D tracking, and advanced AI for years. Software is developed at the rate users use it and pay for it. So from my perspective, there's a fresh influx of new users joining via Creator Studio subscription. That adds massive demand, and it justifies Apple putting more engineers on the team. You can't expect the pro apps team to work for free forever while the rest of the world moves on to AI driven workflows. I personally want to show Apple that we appreciate the developers. I'm signing up for at least a year, not because I have to, because I already own the perpetual license, because I want to vote with my wallet. I want to tell Apple, keep going, Final Cut Pro is worth it. The Creator Studio isn't just about Final Cut Pro. Bringing Pixelmator Pro into the fold is a great move. It's the Photoshop alternative that we actually want. And the integration of Logic Pro's AI models for things like beat detection showed that Apple is finally treating those apps as a unified suite. Think about the OS updates. We get macOS and iOS updates for free every year, but those are tied to hardware sales. Final Cut Pro is very long in the tooth at this point, and it needs big leaps to dominate again. This subscription is the gas in the tank for those leaps. If you already own Final Cut, keep using it. Enjoy the free updates. You don't need to subscribe, but don't hate the model that might actually save our favorite editor from fading into irrelevance. 
Apple is giving users a choice right now. And compared to the 2000 plus I spend on Adobe and Maxon, 129 a year for a professional suite that actually runs natively on my machine is a steal. But I wanna hear from you. Are you staying on the one-time purchase or are you joining the Creator Studio to get access to the other apps? Is the premium content going to be a deal breaker? Let's talk about that in the comments. And if you wanna see how beat detection, transcript search, and visual search perform, make sure you hit subscribe. It does help the channel. As always, thanks for watching.